Hi there, buddy. Hi, Grady. Oh, is he just climbing you? Yeah. Hi. Hi, human. Hi, buddy. I want to be on TV. Now he wants to be on when we're doing stuff. He's like, I like that lady. <laughs> she tells you to do what I want. I like her. Uh, all right. Well. I heard we have a bear. We got a bear. We got a fucking bear. I forgot to go get all my stuff. I was running late and I forgot to get my hippo snout painting to show everybody. Because I went to see the hippos you yesterday. Went to see the hippos, yes. I went to see Jenny and Button and they're awesome. And they do paintings where they just slather paint all over the hippo snout and they press it on a canvas. And then you can buy them. So I bought a painting by Button. It's on my Instagram. I forgot to go get it so I could show it to you. You realize they're pretty much setting up a copyright dis dispute right there. Why? Well, you didn't hear about the the guy who, um, nature photographer, went out with a camera. Mm -hmm. And a monkey picked up the camera and took a selfie. Oh, yeah. And now PETA is suing on behalf of the monkey because they're claiming the monkey took the picture. So the monkey owns the copyright. But all the money goes to take care of the hippos. I mean, they're aquarium hippos. Yeah, but in so, this case, PETA would argue the hippos own the money themselves. They just spend it on, like, watermelons and stuff. Well, you know, it's their choice. It's they, 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 they're, they're the creators here. We have to respect the content creators. And there's like, one little, there's, like, one giant porcupine that lives with them, and I feel kind of bad for that porcupine because, like, the hippos spend all day in the water. But every time they come out of the water, the porcupine's like, hey, guys, what's up? Want to hang out? I'm really lonely because I'm by myself. Why and then they go back in the water and he's like, all right, bye. Why a porcupine? I guess this type of porcupine is native to their habitat in Africa. It's a really, it's like an African super long spines, black and white porcupine, and they're native to the area. But like, why not have two? I I was lonely. <laughs> Like, it's just like, okay, guys, I'll, I'll, I can't really swim, so like, I guess I'll see you later. Well, anyway. But they're very sweet hippos. If not for the stupid three-inch thick glass, I definitely could have hugged them. And the metric ton of water. Because they were underwater. Yeah, but I could like go in the water. I'm not the Wicked Witch of the West, so I won't melt. They come up for air. They're amphibious. They were so cute. And I got a painting by Button, and it's awesome. And I meant to show it to you guys, but I'm a dummy, and I left it in the kitchen, so. <sighs> well, is 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 time for the stupid. Let's, let's begin. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide, interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And we've had a spate of stories of late about kids driving cars. Yeah. Like a ton of stories about kids like stealing cars or just going to see grandma in car. I think four or five by now. Too many. Well, we have a we got a little bit of a twist on that one from Colorado. Um It's, it's a bear. Drove a car? Bear breaks into SUV, then takes it for a short drive. <laughs> a bear drove a car? <laughs> yeah, well, not very well, as you can see by the steering column in the picture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Because that, that is kind of fucked right there. That, that That's when you take it to your mechanic. And I mean, it's a bear. They're a little strong. Yeah, you, you take that to your mechanic and the diagnosis is fucked. That is... You're seen John, have you seen John Wick 2? Yes. When he calls John Leguizamo to look at his car, like, well, you know, your frame's cracked. This, and I don't know if you noticed, but you got a crack in your windshield. Like, <laughs> can you fix it? Yeah, fix it. You need, you need Aurelio. Unless you have Aurelio... Does your insurance cover that? 
<laughs> Bear that broke into an SUV early Friday in Durango took it for a short ride, rolling it out of a driveway and crashing it into a mailbox. Like, I feel like those farmers commercials are all about how they cover the most absurd things. So I feel like if you have farmers, you got to walk in and be like, yo, J. Jonah Jameson said you would cover this motherfucker. Yeah, that would that would be some truth in advertising shit right there. Um, the commotion woke Ron Cornelius and his wife, who found the trash Subaru in their yard. Uh, usually I don't get up at five o'clock unless there's a bear driving down the street, Cornelius joke. <laughs> okay. After the- I don't get up at five o'clock either, but if a bear steals my car, <laughs> I'm probably getting up and staying in the house where I'm safe and watching in horror. The couple didn't. What do you do about that? The couple didn't see the bear leave the SUV and called nine one one after the crash because they didn't know if people were to blame and possibly still in the vehicle. Car rolled backward from a neighbor's home into Cornelius's mailbox and over some utility boxes. Sheriff's uh, office deputies determined a bear was likely to be to blame because it defecated in the car, <laughs> likely because it was nervous. Well, wouldn't oh. you be? Well, yeah. That poor bear probably had no idea what was happening. Ten and two! <laughs> Ten and two! <laughs> we have, well, now we have the definitive answer for where a bear shits, and that's in a Subaru. Poor bear. That had to be terrifying for that poor bear. It also ripped up the interior of the vehicle. It pulled the steering wheel straight off the shaft, ripped the radio out of the dash, and busted out the back window. I feel the exact same way when Kesha comes on. So I know I know exactly how the bear feels. I was going to go with a Bieber joke. You got Bieber? Yeah. Bieber's Because I almost requested Kesha tonight. I requested Kesha last week, though, so... Poor bear. I hope the have they found the bear? They have not found the bear. The bear is gone. I mean, the how bear the fuck f- you gonna know which bear, I guess. <laughs> they have a bear line up. It's the bear with five stars over his head. <laughs> this is like Grand Theft Grizzly. <laughs> Sir, could you pick the bear that stole your car out of this lineup? Uh Maybe and there's no polar bears, in, and you'll notice there's never any polar bears in the lineup. Why no, ain't there no. ever any polar it's bears? Always in the, the black bears. Always the black bears, man. Oh, all right. And he thought there was a picnic basket in the car. Okay, now now it is time to get you know political a bit, which will get me letters, but which YouTube love. They love, but I want to point out that um, stupidity is not inherent to any particular political persuasion. No, it is not. stupidity is universal. It is a thing that we all share together. We are all complete fucking idiots. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Can you just give you a nice warm feeling right here? So, we had some hippie type motherfuckers who decided they were going to do something good and they were going to reclaim an ancient symbol that had been used for hatred in the recent decades. Oh, dear. Did not go quite exactly as they planned. When you say hippies, I assume they're white people. And anytime white people try to reclaim something... Company's line of rainbow-themed swastika t-shirts backfires. Yeah. Think of the swastika and the chances are what comes to mind is the murderous regime of Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany. But the symbol is at least 5,000 years old and is incorporated into Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain iconography. Even today, it is the Indian subcont- in the Indian subcontinent parts of Southeast Asia, it is not uncommon to see the symbol painted on buildings and vehicles as a sign of good fortune. And that's true. Hitler stole that motherfucker and ruined it for everybody. It is this second meaning that a clothing company, KA Design, says it was trying to recapture when it recently launched a line of t-shirts on Teespring featuring the new swastika, emblazoned with rainbow colors and the words love, peace, and zen. Let's have a look at those right now. There there you go. That's that's the, the happy rainbow swastika. I feel like these probably sold really well with the ironic set. Actually, it sold really well with... um. 
and Nazis? Yeah, uh, Andrew Anglin, the founder of the neo-Nazi Daily Stormer website, play, praised the shirts. I have been trying to do this for years, and I am thankful that hippies are finally getting on board with that particular project. I endorse these shirts. In case you were wondering, is it the end times? In case you woke up this morning and were thinking, should I repent my sins? and start stockpiling canned goods. The hippies, the Nazis, are fucking giving an attaboy to the hippies because the hippies are selling swastika gear. Yes, it's the fucking end times. It, the, it, you can't take it back. You can't. I'm sorry. Didn't we all learn this from clerks too? You're not taking it's okay, it. okay, I'm taking it back. No, no, you can't. Not now. Maybe a thousand years from now. Maybe maybe even 200 years from now. But right now, this shit is still going on. Yeah, like we have actual Nazis again. Actual, legit Nazis. And they're not even ashamed of themselves. No. Like... They think it's okay to be Nazis again. So this, not helping. You, you not helping. You can't just take the shit back when it's still an active symbol Yeah. of, of fucking Nazis. Anytime I hear white people say they're going to take something back, I'm just like... No. Like, your heart's in the right place. But, but what if we just didn't? <laughs> yeah, what what what, what the fuck said we just don't. I mean, do in, that. in this case it was like what the fuck and their statement on this. They what the fuck did you think was going to happen? Their statement is hatred and nazism have won. We brought out the worst in people. Of course you did. I mean, there's there's still not like maybe if all the not it maybe if there weren't any more nazis. And all the Nazis had had the Care Bear stare mm. and their hearts grew three sizes and they stopped being worthless bags of shit. Yeah. Maybe then you'd have a shot at this. Maybe. But that hasn't happened. No, it hasn't. And there are still Nazis. Yeah. So, yeah. No. And also taking it back while trying to sell t-shirts. That's I know. That's kind it's, of it's funny that your cool, loving hippie peace movement would have happened to make you money. That's about as American as they get. Oh, and we have more <laughs> Nazi hilarity. All right. That's not a Nazi, that's not a thing. Unless you're talking about <laughs> Mel Brooks, the words Nazi and hilarity don't belong together. Well, you know, Nazis are inherently unfunny. There was that well, shit that's with not Richard Chris Ferguson does a really good routine on Nazis, but there was that shit with Richard Spencer. I laughed for days over that one. That was funny. Yeah. That was funny. But Nazis aren't funny. No, they are. They're like the black hole of funny. And that's that's kind of the point. In Germany, after World War II. They crack down hard. Yeah, you can't do that shit in Germany. You cannot have the swastika up. You cannot have any any symbols of the Reich. And you most certainly... They don't fuck around with that shit. You most certainly cannot go around giving Nazi salutes in Germany. Oh, no. Two Chinese tourists discovered the hard way that giving the outlawed Hitlergruss, or Nazi salute, in front of the Reichstag building in Berlin is no laughing matter. The two men, ages 49 and 36, were quickly de detained after police spotted them taking pictures of each other in front of the country's most popular tourist spot Sunday Saturday, while giving the stiff-armed Heil Hitler greeting that is illegal in Germany punishable by up to three years in jail. Now, before you motherfuckers, censorship free speech motherfuckers on, on the internet, get started here. Um, Germany has been really fucking serious about this because they recognize the Nazis were a plague on mankind. Yeah. And they were responsible for that. 
Yeah. So they put in some very harsh laws after World War II because they were like, no, we're never allowing this again. This, this they, they did a little thing called taking responsibility. And, and the thing is not even like, the, what's the line from Captain America? The first country Hitler invaded was his own. Yeah. Like, fucking everybody was victims of this guy. So they don't fuck around with that shit. So they just don't. And even now, even if the law hadn't been in place, if you go to Germany and show up in front of the, of the Reichstag and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not even going to fucking do it. What the fuck did you? You're just an asshole. You're yeah, even just, if it's not illegal, it's pretty rude. Hey, this is hilarious. No, it isn't. Yeah. But doesn't Asia have a whole like ironic Hitler thing? Yeah. I don't, well, maybe that was a couple of years ago we did that story. So maybe yeah. it's over now. But I know a while ago we did the whole ironic Hitler thing where like they're like they have a KFC like chain that's Hitler fried chicken. Yeah. The, the trouble stuff, is like, with ironic authoritarianism and ironic fascism and ironic racism is it's just indistinguishable what? from the yeah. real thing. And to somebody, it's real. Yeah, it is. You can't. It is not. It's indistinguishable. It's like when you go to see the Emoji movie and you watch it ironically. Sony still gets money for that fucking movie. Get, yeah, like they don't get paid in ironic dollars. Right. They, they still they, get your money. And they're still making a fucking sequel. That's how really? That works. Yes. Yes. Why? Yes. What cracked me up was, I don't know if you use Facebook Messenger at all. No. Facebook Messenger has a feature called stickers, which they're kind of like emojis, but they're bigger and they go all on. And every time a big movie comes out, that movie puts out a set of stickers, you know, um, for all different like messages like yay or boo or thank you or whatever. And uh, they put out emoji movie stickers. So I was like, they made a movie based on emojis. And then made a special set of emojis based on the movie about emojis. Well, you know what, Tara? This is a perfect segue into our next story because... Um, My superpower holds out. It's um, it's emojis. And it's also New Jersey. So, Jersey? Yeah, you, you can be proud of this one. Listen, Jersey's got two hippos, so I'm down with this state now. Are you really, Tara? Are are you? Neither of my former two states of are residence you? had any hippos at all. Man arrested after pleasuring himself during emoji movie. Yeah. New Jersey man accused of performing a lewd act during a screening of the children's emoji movie has turned himself into police. Abraham Parnes, 43. Older than you and I surrendered to the Howell Police Department on Thursday after an anonymous tip led to his identification. He was charged with lewdness and released on a summons. Police said a woman spotted the suspect with his hand down his pants, which he unbuttoned and unzippered, as he was watching the Emoji movie while she was with her children at the Escape Movie Theater in Howell last Friday. Woman reported the incident theater's management. The man was escorted out of the building. The woman called police when she got home. Mother that, of God! There's that, that poop emoji. What, you mean Patrick Stewart? <laughs> we should just call... You know what? If I ever meet Patrick Stewart, the first thing I'm going to do is... I'm gonna, oh, can I get your autograph? He's going to be like, oh, yes, sure. And I'm going to hand him a poop emoji. Did he really do the voice for the poop emoji? He did emoji? the voice for the poop emoji. In fact, if you go to the IMDB page for the emoji movie, it says Patrick Stewart as poop. Okay. I mean, I still feel like that's probably not as bad as X-Men 3. <laughs> but for the, I mean, God damn. You're going to a kid's movie, even if Crystal it's- Crystal is right. Patrick Stewart probably would think that was hilarious and happily sign that picture. If, even, if, even if it's a terrible family film, you're going to a family film and yanking it. 
Really? What did you get off of the? Do you get off on the dismay of disappointed children? Is that it, oh mommy? This like isn't funny. Oh yeah. Like oh yeah. I say I love to speculate, but I don't want to. I don't want to paint this person with an unfair brush. But family movie might have been part of the appeal. Uh, Gross. I know. I'm just saying. Just the fuck, man. Stay the fuck home. Stay the. You don't get movies now. What must it be like to text this guy if he gets all ramped up by emojis? Mm. Mm. Hi, Abe, smiley face. <sighs> and you just get that dot, dot, dot for 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> I mean, it takes all kinds, and we've said it before. Your kink is okay until it touches other people that did not agree to it. Yeah. If can. emojis do it for you, cool. Just jerk off to emojis in the privacy of your own home or with other people that get sexual stuff. Is, it's emojis. it's not like it's not like freeze tag. Okay, sexual stuff. It's not like you run up and like, you're in! No, no. They have to consciously want to be part of it in the first place. You can't just drag people into your shit. Yeah. Don't do it's it. It's not like it's not like fun flash mobs where like no. you can do it in public and people will be like, oh, cool. Or at worst, minorly inconvenience. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, all right. Next one is. Have you ever found somebody's wallet or like lost keys or something? Um, well, I worked retail for a long time. So, yeah, a lot of stuff gets left behind and you got to deal with it. Did you ever get a reward for returning that stuff to the people? No. Did you ever expect one? Not really. You just did it because it was the right thing to do, right? Yeah. Well, let's talk about expectations and taking shit a bit too far. Literally. Man punches car at Great Falls dealership. Therein lies a story. Give us a moment. Bryce Stephen Booze, that's, that's his name, is facing felony charge after he allegedly punched and wiped feces on a car at a Great Falls dealership. Court documents state the, an officer was sent to the dealership after a caller reported that Booze punched a car put his hands down his pants and smeared feces down the length of the car. Which means he had already shit his pants. Or just could shit on command, which is kind of impressive, let's be honest. Either way, yeah. you have shit your pants. Yes. Col <coughs> the caller also reported that Booze was wearing a knife holster. Uh, after the officer stopped Booze near the intersection of 35th and 8th Street at 8th Avenue South, <coughs> Booze stated the dealership should have given him money for returning keys he found on the sidewalk. <coughs> now, we talk a whole lot about entitlement these days. Yeah. But if you think because you <coughs> returned a, pair, a set of keys to a car dealership, and you deserve a reward that the best response for not getting one is to wipe your shit on a car? Oh! I was to say that's not the best response to anything ever. Also, not only have you not gotten a reward, you've shit your pants. Right. <laughs> you have not improved your situation because now you have shit yourself. I was like, I'll show them. Yeah, you sure did. Your pants are full of shit. Yeah. You, you've shit your... Why? <coughs> and now you're going to jail. I mean, did he think after he fucked the cards, like, now I'll get my reward? Now they'll the understand. The dealership car is estimated at over $1,500. Really? Yeah. Yeah, really. We're cleaning off some poop. You gotta sell that car. 
he probably dented the, the bodywork, which... Oh, he kicked it, too. All right. Yeah. So he probably dented a fender or something. Yeah. All right. And he smeared poop on it. And the dealership's name is in a court report, and it's, it's, it's on the internet. So there, everyone who goes to that dealership is going to be like, which one's the poop car? I don't want the poop car. I mean, We've got a lovely car, right? Is it the poop car? No. Can you prove to me it's not the poop car? No one's going to buy the poop car. It's the outside of, like, you run it through a car wash and... And still, you, you know, Tara, you work retail. Come on. Yeah, I know. No one is going to buy the poop car. I've had people open a product in front of me to look at it and then ask me for an unopened one. No one is going to buy the poop car because that's true. <sighs> Finally tonight, I, I don't think we can get any worse than this one tonight. We'll probably get worse than this one someday, but not tonight. But today is not that day. Oh, God help. You, you know what? As with as far as this one goes, you better be glad we don't get worse than this one. Holy shit. Horrified McDonald's customers watch naked man inject drugs into his testicles. Wow. Woman, okay. woman described her horror after seeing a naked man injecting drugs into his testicles outside the toilets of a city center branch of McDonald's. Where? I think this is the UK. Merseyside police oh, <clears throat> confirmed they were called to the Lord Street branch of the fast food restaurant to reports a man had exposed himself to a woman. An eyewitness who told the Echo about her ordeal but did not want to be named described how the naked man lifted up his genitals and injected himself with drugs needle in his scrotum. She also claimed the main man was making strange noises throughout the incident. Of course he was. He was jamming a needle in his balls. <laughs> the man was then locked in the toilets by a member of McDonald's staff who then called police. Okay. He trapped him like a spider? <laughs> like you just put a glass over a spider until someone who's not arachnophobic is there to deal with it? That's what you did? <laughs> Okay. I just I, Also, if there was a bathroom, why was he injecting stuff into his balls outside of it? There's a stall! There's a bathroom! He's going in the bathroom! And where did his clothes go? Where the fuck did his clothes go? He sold them for drugs? And people are like, what kind of noise? Probably, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Probably like that. Like, I know people who use needle drugs tend to shoot up in weird places so they don't get track marks. Like, models used to legit shoot heroin between their toes and into their eyeballs. Yeah, but... but your balls? And also, you're naked so everyone's going to see. And also, I don't think this guy was trying to, you know, be real discreet. In the first I mean, place. Clearly not. I just, I'm thinking about that McDonald's employee who's like, okay. Does I'm, not get paid enough for this, I guarantee you. He is leveraging the shit to a raise. Because like, the next time, the next time his employee report comes around, he's going to be like, so uh, tell me about your performance this year. Well, I locked the naked motherfucker with a needle in his scrotum in the McDonald's bathroom for you motherfuckers. Can I get another quarter an hour, please? Yeah. This is you... the kind of shit your retail and service employees deal with. Yeah. And they don't get paid enough. They're getting paid minimum fucking wage to deal with dudes shooting up their scrotum. And I just want to point out for you who are not in America and they got and they're you're going minimum wage. Well, that's that's not so bad. It's seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour in America. Yeah. Seven US dollars twenty-five cents. That's the American minimum wage. And everyone and everyone who is not aware of this in places like Australia and the UK just heard that and just went. Countries with like humanity. Yeah. Yeah, it's it it's uh now it is the UK. This even but even still, even on a UK minimum wage, 
still not getting paid enough no. to lock a naked man with a needle in his scrotum into the bathroom. Still she not getting paid balls. enough. Like, that's desperation. This is that th there is no drug. There is no drug good enough to make me, you know, if someone said, this drug is the best drug in the entire world. And after you take it, you will feel, you will remember this for the rest of your life. You will feel so good. Oh, it's great. All you gotta do is shove a needle in your balls. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. No. Like I know chicks soak tampons in vodka and shove them up like, cause you get drunk faster and without the hangover. And I'm like, okay. Then there's the yeast infection, though. Yeah, yeah, because vodka's got sugar in it. Yeah, and that seems unwise. <sighs> God damn. Also, I hope you weren't hoping to get laid later, because you're gonna be really dehydrated there. Uh, like, just... I don't know why we have to get stupid creative about this shit. Just oh. drink. Oh, there's a UK guy in the channel who's like, that's the equivalent to five quid an hour. Yeah, now you're seeing how fucked up it is. Fucking minimum wage. Anyway. So and they want to lower it. The first There thing are people that want to lower it. Yeah. Because we're bullshit in this country. We are. First thing we learned this week is no drug. If you are shooting up a drug that has you naked in front of a McDonald's bathroom with a needle in your balls... That's not a good drug. And my Devo says it was the Szechuan sauce, wasn't it? Szechuan sauce. That's like a Rick and Morty thing, right? Like, yeah. they want the Mulan sauce back. Hey, Morty. Morty, you already shoot my balls. Szechuan sauce. My balls, Morty. <laughs> WWW, shoot it. My balls, Morty. Um, dot com. 100 years. Anyway. Uh, we've learned that no one wants to buy the poop car. Yeah. Also, shitting your pants <laughs> isn't going to teach anybody a lesson but you. <laughs> if you're trying to win an argument by shitting your pants, you've already lost. Yeah. You've, you, have, you have seeded the high ground. We, we've learned that, um, Germany takes that Nazi shit really fucking serious, you idiot. Yeah, they don't. Fuck. If you're going to visit a foreign country, just learn like the basics of their social norms, because yeah. little things will get you in trouble. Like some countries don't they don't want to touch your left hand because that's what they use for all their bathroom stuff there. And it's considered rude. Like in most of the Middle East, showing the bottom of your shoes is very rude. Like you got to learn little basic things like yeah, don't. It's not absolute. It's not fucking Epcot, all right? It's not a goddamn right. amusement park. People don't live do there. Don't do Nazi salutes at Epcot either, though. Well, yeah, don't do it at Epcot either. Don't yeah. do Nazi salutes anywhere. We've learned that, no, we're not, you're not taking it back. If, if you have it in your mind that's, that, that something, you can take something horrible back and make it not, you're not doing it. Welcome if you to the think universe. about doing that and think it's a great idea, think about what a great idea not doing that is. Yes. Yes. Like, sometimes I think we've lost the ability before we do things to think, but what if I didn't do this thing? Um, we also learned that uh, sexual peccadillos are a uh, team effort, but you have to ask permission first. Yeah. It's not... And they don't belong anywhere near the emoji movie. Yeah, God. It's, it's not one of those... It's not in public. It's you know that's that for that that old saying it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. It's no. really not. No. It's really fucking not. How long do you think before they come out with like emoji anal beads? Yesterday. And would the poop one be first or last? <laughs> Someone's patenting that shit. You you just gave it away, Tara. You just I know, gave... it's like a million dollar idea. I just gave it away. Just gone. Just gone. And finally, we've learned bears will steal your fucking car. Yeah. Wow. Children and bears. Who knew? Really, really puts life in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. 
bear will just up and steal your damn car. And they're terrible drivers. Which makes sense, because they don't have thumbs. Oh. Or driver's he, aid. He, he did his best. He tried. He tried. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> he didn't know. He's just a bear. He's probably pretty scared. How else is he going to get an Uber job? He's got to start somewhere. <laughs> it's a gig economy, man. He's got to start somewhere.